Let's have a look around on the outside just to cap off February of 21 because all of this is going to change tomorrow as everybody has to come back inside because the weather is changing at night again. We're going back down into single digits for about three nights, maybe four. And I have figured out why I get the jiggle when I've got the gimbal. It's so sensitive, it's picking up my pulse. So I do apologize. I'm gonna see if I can edit that out. So let's have a look, see what's going on outside with the kids. And here is the first blooms opening of my Chao Praia. Looking very, very pretty not fragrant, but I'm kind of happy to see these blooms, even though she's been through a lot and these are stress blooms. But I'm glad that I do have an orchid that I actually wanted as opposed to getting a mislabeled one. And this rack is already somewhat empty because I want to lighten the load tomorrow. Here's Ampuya Thea. Pink Dreamer, the spikes are coming along really nicely. Kimmy over here, yeah, kind of still waiting for spikes. Nothing, nothing yet. I don't know. Come on, Kimmy, give me a break. And then just let me pan over gently and slowly. Well, maybe down here. I still have my Tolumnia enjoying some of the light that comes in at night all the time. And Jumelia is really doing well, I'm glad. And then I have my Bletillo over there and the Catlia Arawaguensis. And we've got Polysema aberrans in the back. Look at the size of that growth. Coming on nicely. And so is the second growth, which I'm trying to train to go to the light here, to the left is like that way. That's where the sun comes. Uh, trying to get it up right into the pot. We'll see. Let's mosey on to the somewhat empty Vanderrack. And how about I just say hello? <laughs> oh dear, hi. Thank you so much for joining me. I've just finished cleaning up Lekka, the second bag of the dirty Lekka. So I need to have my little afternoon walkabout, have a look-see. And as we are outdoors, I thought I'd take you along. And here's that Neo Stylus Blue, the one with the funky spikes. And I'm only getting one more bloom out of that last spike as well. Very bizarre, very bizarre. We'll see how, what happens this growing season. And then here is Rainbow Forest, hanging out, doing well. Nothing to complain about on this one at all. Easy orchid, love it. And then we'll go and head towards the blooming alley. How can I forget my little Tolumnia tray? Everything is starting to bloom. I've got a branch coming on an old spike. Been flushing these guys out with just RO water and occasional seaweed, carrying them in and out every day. So I've got bud blast going on on other spikes. But you can see what I mean about assorted Tolumnias. I got the tags. Everybody came with a tag. But I have a pink brisht here. And in a separate basket, I have a pink brisht here. I have a lot of pink brishts. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty. I'm not complaining. But they were all mislabeled when they arrived. Maybe the Gold Coast and the Golden Fire. Maybe those are the right ones. But other than that, I've got lots of pink brisht. They're doing okay. I'm looking forward to this coming season where I can treat them properly and not nuke them with fertilizer. All right, now to the blooming alley. Bit of a tight squeeze up here, but you can see my one of my orange nuggets over there is pushing buds, coming on really well. And there's another one right next to it there. That also has buds. I can't reach at this point because of where it's located, but two orange nuggets will be in bud very shortly. And the Lelia perparata is showing a new growth at the base there. 
and it's not progressing very fast because the temperature is not what it needs to be for it right now. And then I have here just random cattleyas and purpuratas just doing their thing. They all have to come inside soon. Some new growths are progressing nicely as in the back there with my purpurata variety striata. This, this new growth right here, there we go. And I've got a lot of backlight from the sun, which is not a bad thing, but I can't do this tomorrow. Tomorrow is March and everybody's indoors. And then this is my amethyst and it has never bloomed for me, but it's growing really well. If I can get a steady temperatures coming, I need to repot this because it has quite a few new roots going and it's been in this pot for three years now. So that needs to be taken care of. And then let's go to the next shelf down. And you can see my luminosa is growing into the media there, new roots. Happy about that. Or steady eye is coming into growth. This is Epidendrum or, sorry, Coilostylus ciliaris variety or steady eye. That's the right way. And Holdenii, you can just see that new growth peaking there very slowly, but it's coming. My zip is still shut down. <laughs> Nothing happening there. Still quietly sitting away. And let me mosey on to my Prostechia. And I do believe it's the um, Cochleata. That was a badly purchased orchid. I wanted the Lancifolium and it was mislabeled. My Dawiana is just hanging out. I'm seeing some bulging in the growth over here. Me, can I do this? Over here on the left. There's a little bit of a bulge coming for the new growth of the season. And then I moved my Gyrak Kiku over here because look at all that anthocyanin. That's a bit much, I would say. That is already on the bordering on, of stress anthocyanin. It was on the west side of the rack that we saw earlier and it picked up quite a bit of color. So it's now going to just be babied in shade. And when I bring it in, it won't be under any blurple lights either. And Hibiki is doing well after the repot, not missing a beat. Is that a bug or is that a seed? No, that's a kink. Mechanical damage, okay. And back there, you can see my one little golden peacock spike is starting. And I'm not turning them. I want them to open facing the same way when they come in then at least my indoor blooming alley will have blooms facing the right direction. And um, yeah, let's go down one more shelf. I brought my Dendrobium nobili here just to protect those buds a little bit more. Now that it is in bud, I don't need to have it out on that table. It's getting plenty of light in that location. My little fairy here. The bloom spike it had didn't even last a week. So despite the fact that this new growth did bloom, it didn't last a week and the blooms were not impressive after the stress I put it through in the summer. And then I have here my Chrysnetia green light, which is doing all right. Hanging out and all like the Guatemalenses here that I would like to repot. I'm not seeing much action in the sheaths, although there are shadows. I may just skip it and repot it in order to get that over and done with. I have a lot of things to address here. I just wanted the night temperatures to be more steady before I get going. Look at my Entsfelsii spike. Check that out. All the way up there. And that is the orchid down there. Yeah. Delicate maneuver with this one. I hardly touch this shelf. And that is why I like my Rapiculus lelias in semi-hydro because all I need to do is pour water through the pot and I don't have to keep maneuvering and lifting them out of their mask. For the eventualities of spikes like these. <laughs> and here I have 
my flageralis piece on the ninja mount. It's doing all right. Those roots have not stopped growing, so I'm really pleased. And they're now also absorbing water. Finally. And then, you know, the random things going on here. CG Roebling is starting with one new growth that you can see at the base there. And the left growth here is also swelling with a new growth. And my Maxima, look at that. I see contours of buds on the Maxima on two sheaths. They are very prominent. So maybe the third one will push afterwards as well. But yep, they're on the move. Maxima blooms coming soon. And then here I got all my little random, like my Darwinara blue. My Encyclia Garciana that was victim of puppy. I have it soaking in that plate, even though it's winter. I really, really need to address this one as well. Again, just waiting for the temperature to be okay. It's not really pushing roots that I can see, but it needs, it needs to be addressed. It has to come off that mound. And then my Renanthera citrina down there, you can see hopefully that spike poking out. And then here is my Christensoniana vietnamica losing some leaves. Everybody, I'm sorry about the angle. It's very difficult in this tight little squeeze here. And then we can go up a little bit over here to the other flageralis piece, Brassavola flageralis. And that growth is coming on really, really well now. And another one is starting right there. And I haven't lost that root tip. <laughs> Here are my little random pots of epicatlias. And everybody is just chugging along, growing roots. There's one pot here growing roots, which is my magic wand. And there's the Lodigesii skinnery cross in the background there. Also growing roots. And I have lots and lots of spikes on my Dendrobium tortile. 21 I've counted so far. All those spiky things there. Yeah, spikes. Love it. I'm so happy this orchid is now in a pot. And here's the other piece of the Neostylus blue. And we shall see how that fares this season. And hopefully I get it right and don't mess up any kind of this nutrition or over fertilizing on that one as well. My little Chantilly Lace Twinkle, the buds it tried to produce, they never bloomed. So we're not ready yet with the maturity of my Chantilly Lace. Then slowly, lots and lots happening on the Eonopsis Popcorn Haruri. Got lots of little new growths peeking out in random places. And one of my unicorns is waking up. New growth coming there. Anosmum is still fast asleep. This piece of unicorn is not doing anything. Victoria Regina is all right, where she is doing really well. My polyanthem is losing all the leaves now. So it's in that stage, there will be no growths for a little while yet. And here's Exile, doing quite well. I must say I'm happy now that it has its mount and it's just pushing out growths and depending on the temperature is how quickly they will grow. But it's nice to see already the start of two new growths. And Serenoa, of course. I've been trimming off blooms as they were starting to age. We still have a few left. Purdy, purdy, purdy. Let's go and check the shelf right here with the Dendrobium Berioda. That is going to absolutely be knockout again this year. 40 spikes is what I've counted. 
I've stopped counting after that and I kept seeing new ones come out in random little places, stragglers like these here. So yeah, let's stick with 40. I think that's pretty good. I think we can handle that. <laughs> and all my little repiculous lelias, they're all right. It's been quite humid, so I've been really careful with regards to no spraying for the last three days. They have a lot of humidity around them. And that is finally something that nature is doing. You see how wet these stones and the lava and everything looks? That's not me with the sprayer. That is the humidity in the air. I can't believe it. We had 87% yesterday with 17 degrees Celsius. And today we're at 70% humidity. This is important because my sangilobia here is finally growing roots. It's still wobbly in the pot. Maybe I'll do an update on them. Just the repiculous lelias. Diana is branching on the root that died back. So I'm glad to see that. And over here in the bucket, I still have my Rinko Stylus Gigantea cross with Vanda Cerula. It is branching out new roots at the top there, but they're not, they're not going to last. They're not going to continue growing for the rest of the season, no matter how hard I try. Still in the bucket. I change that water every second day. Yeah, me and Rinko Stylus, we don't match. <laughs> There's one more thing I'd like to show you. Let's go up very slowly in my egg crate. <laughs> no other way to move this around is my Maasai Red coming into bloom. Six spikes doing really well. Very, very beautiful, beautiful burgundy red. Again, I liken it to Barolo wine. And I have to be super on top of these aphids. Even my Barioda, be very, very aware. I don't want them to uh, take out my blooms that I wait for a year to come. So they are, this is, um, at least this is not fragrant, so it doesn't attract as many aphids or mealybugs. But still, I don't like when I see even the slightest hint the Dendrobium Barioda, I have to be much more vigilant. Peggy Ruth Carpenter is starting to fade. But after nine spikes, I think it's her time. Also need to address her eventually. Doesn't mean that the pot needs changing, but there's too many pieces in there from what I gather. So when the time comes, we'll take care of that. I just want to show my Colarthron Bicornutum here. This spike. Yeah, it's another one of those. You're taking forever. Oh, and let me go, let me step back a bit, see how I can fandangle my way around here. Just one second. Look who's being a good boy waiting for walkies. Hey, King, you're a good boy. I brought a special one down from the top shelf just to show you, Michael McCarthy, look at this. This is my commercial no ID Zygopedalum. I would have showed her on the top shelf, but the light was so bad. I figured she deserves to be seen without any headaches or too much jiggling. Look at that. We're going to see her in a Blooms For You video once all the buds have opened. Or unless I see Blooms fading, and then I'll quickly film her and give the Blooms away whichever comes first. But so far, they're holding on really, really well. And I'm super, super pleased we made it three years later. Beautiful. Little bit of a different color on screen than what I see here, but I'm sure everybody is very, very familiar with the normal, regular zygopetalums. And a brief look at my Van der Leppard yawn. Two spikes are really obvious, but there's four in total. 
that are being worked on at this moment. Yay! At least I'm going to be able to keep one medium-sized banda. I think all my other bigger bandas are gone. For reasons which have to do with tap water and puppies. But Leopard Yon I have four spikes. So glad to see this. Quick tour of everything out here. While we still see this, I don't know how long it'll take before they're all back outside again. And also to get it in before the February month is over. So have a wonderful day, everybody. I really appreciate you coming in to have a quick look-see. Please remember that if you see any orchids that you have in common, hit me up in the email, which is in the description below regarding care collabs, okay? I would really appreciate it if you see orchids that we have in common. Let's get together and do a care collab. Enjoy your day. Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Bye.